Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I am Helen Weiser, your newer executive director. I was actually meant to meet most of you at last year's auction, um, but as you know, we um, couldn't make it happen in person. Um, you know, in my 10 month tenure with Friendly House so far, I have learned that our staff are incredibly talented, intelligent, passionate individuals. And I learn from them every day, and I'm so grateful that I get to be a part of their, this community with them. I've also learned that our volunteers give tire, tirelessly of their time and their talent. Many of you have given me your personal time. You've provided mentorship, you've provided guidance and education on the, on the history of Friendly House, and I am incredibly grateful for you. I've also learned about the incredible generosity of our community. Um, of supporters for Friendly House. It's because of you that we get to be of service in the community. And um, man, you guys have just been incredibly generous and supportive in so, so many ways. And I thank you for that. I want to thank our staff for this incredible event tonight. I want to thank our auction committee for your tireless hours in putting this incredible program together tonight. And I would like to thank our sponsors for your support this evening. I have the distinct honor of introducing you to our host, China Forbes. China is the lead singer for Pink Martini and has been the lead singer since 1995. And not just that, but she is an incredible member of our community at large here in Portland. So without further ado, let's get this show started. And um, China, the floor is now yours. Thank you for joining us this evening. I'm China Forbes of Portland's own Pink Martini, and I'm coming to you from my own friendly house. As you can see, I live in the forest. <laughs> I am thrilled to be here. Tonight, we are going to hear some amazing stories meet some incredible people, and enjoy a little music too. I'm so glad you could join me as we look back on this past year and get excited for the future. This year, Friendly House did something a little different with their auction sponsorships. They wanted to make sure that it wasn't only the bigger, more established businesses that were afforded the visibility of sponsorship. Instead, they wanted to include some smaller, newer businesses too. All of the businesses who sponsored at the silver level or above were able to gift an additional sponsorship to a BIPOC or a woman-owned business or a nonprofit of their choice. It provided a great opportunity for the smaller businesses to get some exposure and it reflected Friendly House's values of building community by giving us all a way to help each other. It's a long list of sponsors this year, but we couldn't be happier to have each and every one of them. Thank you to ESCO, Hoffman Construction, Home Street Bank, 1535 LLC, John and Mary Calvin, Oak Tree Investors, JDL Development, Care Oregon, Selco Community Credit Union, Home Instead Senior Care, Espousal Strategies, Daimler Trucks, North America, KBC Management, Northwest Neighborhood Veterinary Hospital, Harriet Denison, Walsh Construction, Home First Development, Neil Kelly, Vitality Physical Therapy, Reedville Catering, Department of Community, Lift Urban Portland, Dead Stock Coffee, J&K Partnership, Music Together of Portland, The Dragonfly Coffee House, Brown Hope, Abbey Creek Vineyard, BTS Affairs, and Cason's Fine Meats. Wow, that's a long list. Thank you to all those amazing friends. Let's talk a little bit about Friendly House now. They're a community center and social service agency that has been helping the people of Portland for 91 years. That is pretty incredible. Since their founding in 1930, they have been committed to addressing the struggles and needs of our most vulnerable neighbors, all while helping create individual friendships and a vibrant, interconnected community. Their programs span the gamut from providing essential support to those who are struggling, to enhancing 
lives with classes and recreation opportunities. They serve everyone from preschoolers to older adults and to make sure that everyone is included, all of their programs are offered for free or on a sliding fee scale. Friendly House took on 2020 with the same chutzpah and can-do attitude that they bring to all their work. They adapted existing programming, turning to virtual socials, food box deliveries, and phone-based services for older adults. But they also created new pilot programs built from scratch to address the pandemic specific challenges we all faced. The Student Success at Home program matched children with volunteers who became their friends, mentors, and champions, providing educational and technical support to kids enrolled in distance learning, as well as assistance to their families if they needed help with rent, food, or utilities. Some of our friends were willing to share with us their experience of Friendly House during this past year. So my family just moved from New York to Portland and it was in the moment of the pandemic and we were surprised to learn that Friendly House was offering opportunities to place a high school volunteer with elementary school kids. And my son, who's pretty outgoing and gregarious, um, thought it would be a really good idea. Hi, so what's your name? Walker. Hey, Walker. So how did you come to meet your friend from Friendly House? Well, um, I moved here from New York and I needed someone to talk to, so um, Friendly House called up and asked if I wanted to talk to one of the people who worked there. So why has it been important that you've had a friend who's been a little bit older than you over the past couple months, especially during the pandemic? Um, it has motivated me. It's given me um, something to look forward to. Um, and um, it's really fun. Can you tell me a little bit what's fun? Well, <laughs> we play games and we sometimes do art. Um, we, and we just get to talk. Do you think you would recommend other kids have a friend at Friendly House? Yes. And why? Because they're friendly. <laughs> It just seemed like a really great opportunity and Walker um, and Isabella connected very well and the, the relationship is ongoing and it's, it's really helped uh, his adjustment to a new city um, to know that there's someone out there older than him um, who cares about him. So, thanks. Hi guys, I'm Kate and I have been a Friendly House parent for two years and we're really, really happy with all of the services and especially during the pandemic once it started and everything was really in flux, it was really crazy time um, for all of us and Friendly House really stepped up. They helped us organize Christmas for the kids which wouldn't have been possible without their donations as well as shoes and coats for the winter season. Um, we've had a uh, great, great help with Anne and the distance learning buddy system for my oldest son, Wilson. Uh, she sits with him once a week and takes the pressure off of me a little bit. Uh, it's really helpful. Um, and just Friendly House has just been amazing. I can't recommend it enough. I feel like uh, it's just been a stable part of our community since I've moved here. It's so close to Chapman where my oldest son goes and we've used you guys for after school, for full-time childcare for my youngest, gone to all of the events and then we really miss the movie nights and game nights and all the fun things which hopefully will come back once things reopen. Um, but we're really happy Friendly House family and we were recommended by other people in the community so I'm happy to pay it forward, let you guys know that they're really great and yeah, that's all I got. I found it incredibly important because I tried, uh, when I realized I needed help, I was 
fighting it because I'd always been taught, you know, take care of yourself. And so I had to admit that I needed help and it took me years to find it because I didn't realize you had to have a caseworker to contact services because then they believe that you really need the help. And otherwise they're not sure who you are or if you really need it. So, and plus caseworkers can contact for you or get you get you um, names and phone numbers to get help so you can be your own advocate and call and make arrangements. So it just makes the whole thing so much easier and nobody acts like you are a failure or anything like that. They just are there to help and that really makes you feel good because it's a hard transition. Um, it's really important to me that it feels like the Friendly House and I are working together. They make me feel like, yes, there's something I can do. And they give me directions in how to um, take care of things myself. So I, I feel like I'm working in a partnership. Um. What's something you think people should know about Friendly House and Sage Metro Portland? Well, if you look at the list of services that Friendly House and Sage offers, it's very impressive, which you might expect from a service organization with such a long history. And I do encourage you to look at all those services. But what I really want people to know about what I experienced was the things that I didn't expect. Well, like with COVID, I wasn't planning to be stuck at home. And not only do I have a group of friends to talk to and to learn how to do Zoom with, which was a big hurdle for me, but I've, I've learned to meditate with a group of people in Sage Online. I'm doing a writing class, a learning how to really express myself uh, and other things that have happened in my own life that aren't on any list or pamphlet with Friendly House. When a friend of mine disappeared and I suddenly was the executor with legal issues and had no idea where to even begin, Friendly House and Sage helped me figure out how to deal with that. When my great nephew came out to me as gay and wanted my support, again, Friendly House and Sage helped me find ways to support a teenager uh, and uh, so many things. Uh, so I just want to say it's not just what you read about or what you see. There's so much more there, and I feel like if I have a problem, I can go to Friendly House and Sage, whatever it is, and I've got a friend who will help me, and that's <laughs> been great during COVID. You all are going to make me cry, aren't you? This is wonderful. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's our goal. That's our <laughs> Oh, my goodness. But it's true. It really is. I mean... I spent a lot of time thinking about it and and uh, this is uh, nothing I expected when I first went on a canoe trip with Sage down the river that I would have friends and and really feel support. But let me tell you, during COVID, there hasn't been much support all over the place, but Friendly House and Sage haven't let me down. Thank you so much, Brian. Thank you. Well, that was heartwarming. And folks, you all know that tonight is a fundraiser. So have you all contributed yet to Friendly House? Let's check in right now and see where we are with our paddle raise donations.
And now it's time for a musical interlude. Thomas Lauderdale and I will be performing a few Pink Martini favorites tonight. One of them is the first track on our very first record, Amato Mio. And that record came out in 1997. So we're almost as old as Friendly House, but not quite. And the next song is a song we wrote together and it's called Sympathique or Je ne veux pas travailler, which means I don't want to work. And we hope that you enjoy them. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. And take it away, Maestro. dream world of sweet delight Many times I've whispered Amano mio It was just a phrase that I'd heard in plays I was acting a part But now when I whisper Amano Can't you tell I care by the feeling there? For it comes from my heart, my one endeavor. My love, my darling, will be to hold you and hold you tight. Amado mio, love me forever and let forever begin tonight and let forever begin tonight and let forever <laughs> Are we having applause again? Okay. <laughs> it's a fun new world of performance. That's right, Jaina. We never have to leave our homes. No, you don't. I'm here. In your home. In my home. This and is where I live. Wonderful place Amidst to these perform. Curtains. <laughs> so many curtains. So many curtains. This next song is the song, first song that we ever wrote. Mm -hmm. uh, and you had a melody. Yes, I was sitting upstairs on the third floor of this building on the piano that I now own that used to be Thomas's baby grand. And I started playing a melody. Play it, play it. Um, well, okay. And I thought, that sounds French. That really sounds sort of French. And so there was this piece of music on the piano by Poulenc, an art song called Hotel, with a, sort of an unsingable melody, unless you're a, sort of a classical person. And, uh, but with the final lyrics, je ne, veux pas je ne veux pas travailler, je veux fumer. I don't want to work, I want to smoke. And so we turned it into a song. We did. And then it became a big hit in France. Which was amazing. And we were nominated for Song of the Year at the French Grammys, Les Victoires de la Musique. Yes. Launched our career. And, and we've been singing it for 25 years. Here's, Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> uh. 
Ma chambre a la forme d'une cage Le soleil passe son bras par la fenêtre Les chasseurs à ma porte comme les petits soldats Qui veulent me prendre Je ne veux pas travailler je ne veux pas déjeuner Je veux seulement t'oublier Et puis je fume T'es chargé, connu le parfum de l'amour Un million de roses ne pommerait pas autant Maintenant une seule fleur dans mes entourages Me rend malade Je ne veux pas travailler je ne veux pas déjeuner Je veux seulement t'oublier Et puis je fume Je ne suis pas fière de ça Cette vie qui veut me tuer C'est magnifique être sympathique Mais je ne le connais jamais je ne veux pas travailler, je ne veux pas déjeuner, je veux seulement t'oublier, et puis je fuis. Cette vie qui veut me tuer C'est magnifique Être sympathique Mais je ne le connais jamais Je ne veux pas travailler Non, je ne veux pas déjeuner Je veux seulement t'oublier Well, that was fun. Friendly House is so grateful for all of our friends who have made donations for this event so far. It's amazing what the community can do when we all come together. We can't all be together in person tonight, but we'd love to show you some of the words and faces of our donors, and we hope you will be inspired to join them.
Wow, that is a lot of generosity and love for Friendly House. Thank you, friends. Some of you might be new to Friendly House and you might be wondering what they do and how the heck they did it and all in the middle of the pandemic and why they have all this amazing support. Well, here to tell you more about that is Maya Chamberlain, Friendly House Assistant Director. Pretty sure that after you hear from Maya, you'll be looking for that donate button. My name is Maya Chamberlain and I'm the Assistant Director of Friendly House. It is my privilege to tell you a little bit about what's happened in this last year. It was March 11th, 2020, and I was arriving late to the office after a morning meeting offsite. As I walked into the Anderson building, I saw our executive director, development team, and our auction co-chairs huddled in a quiet, closed door conversation in our conference room. The auction was two days away, and we were a community on edge with the threat of a global pandemic looming. The meeting ended and I can hear my teammates making their way up the narrow staircase and to my office where Monique, our fearless development director, wide-eyed and smiling, announces, we're moving the auction online and it'll be amazing. Friendly House was, if not the first, one of the first nonprofits in Portland to pivot their major fundraiser to an online event. It was brave and bold and no one had any idea what the impact would be. But that night, Friday, March 13th, this community showed the rest of the state what could be achieved when we all worked together. This event set the tone for how Friendly House would respond in the coming year. It was the beginning of a year that tested our resilience, called upon our shared creativity and flexibility, and gave endless opportunities for living our mission and values in lockstep with our community. The following Monday, Friendly House leadership team met to discuss how we'd address our community's needs during this new reality. We worried about food for children who typically have two meals a day at school and our older adults who could no longer safely get their groceries. We worried about children and families abruptly stuck at home and the impact of closed doors on our homeless friends and neighbors. And weighing heavily on everyone's mind, was how is an organization committed to building community going to protect vulnerable people from the devastating impact of isolation? The reality was upon us, and we knew we needed to find a way to address the needs that were coming. We converted classrooms into staging areas for emergency food boxes. In addition to food, supplies such as toilet paper, diapers, masks, and disinfectant products were dispersed to the people who needed it most. Our teachers checked in with all of our preschool and after-school families and provided one-on-one -on -one support to children and caregivers whose lives had changed overnight. Senior program staff discontinued home visits and began a system of regular phone check-ins with older adults who were too vulnerable to leave their homes. Case managers coordinated regular food and prescription deliveries, safe transportation for urgent medical appointments, and matched our most vulnerable and isolated folks with volunteers able to check in daily to be sure their social and emotional needs were being met. In early June, we responded to an opportunity from the Oregon Health Authority and were accepted as a partner. We launched a new project with a three-pronged approach to fighting COVID-19. We educated our community on how to stay safe in this new world we provided access and education about testing and vaccinations, and we provided social services to those who lost income as a result of needing to quarantine or isolate due to exposure or contracting COVID-19. I had the opportunity to work with the first family that was referred to us. The Dangs are a household of seven, spanning three generations, including grandma and grandpa, both in their 80s, and three children ranging from eight to 17 and a very exhausted couple sandwiched in the middle. Grandpa was just returning home after two months in the hospital, recovering from the devastating impacts of COVID-19. His son, Dan, was the primary caregiver in the home at the time. Dan explained to me that he tested positive at the same time as his elderly parents and took time off work due to quarantine and to tend to his parents' many needs. His fatigue was palpable through the phone. He shared many times, I love my family, I owe them everything. 
The work of caring for them is easy. And his voice grew quiet and I could hear the unmistakable tremor of emotion. Maya, I can't pay my bills. The crushing weight of not being able to provide for his family as he had done for so long was taking a toll. He was ashamed that his wife had to pick up extra shifts at the local grocery store where she worked. And now she's sick too. With this final acknowledgement, he sobbed. We were quiet for a moment. He went on to explain that his wife had suggested that their eldest son make the call to Friendly House because his English is better, he explained. But I've not told my wife or anybody how far behind we are in the bills and I can't tell them. I begin to share with him the ways in which Friendly House and OHA are partnering to help. I explained that we'd have gift cards delivered to them that afternoon, and we'd be able to pay not only the current amount due for his rent, PGE, cell phone, and other utility bills, but that we had separate funds to pay the past due bills also. I took a break in my excited explanation to be sure I wasn't talking too fast. Mr. Dang, are you still there? It was silent for a moment, and then he said, there are no words in my language or yours to tell my thanks. Assistance from OHA and our partners at Multnomah County has allowed us to ramp up our virtual programming for seniors and LGBT older adults. This fall, we launched a new pilot program called Student Success at Home, which matches grade school students with skilled, vetted volunteers who meet remotely with kids who need a little extra academic support or just a new person to talk with about the challenges of distance learning. For families who aren't able to work from home and need childcare, we reopened our preschool and after-school programs under emergency childcare guidance in early August. We opened slowly and carefully to ensure the safety of our families and our staff. It has been a crazy ride and we know it's not over, but we were able to dig in and help and that feels so good. The reason that this year went as well as it did under these challenging circumstances all boils down to one thing, our community. We have experienced your generosity, not only your donations, but the generosity of your spirit. The amount of support we've raised every step of the way has made helping possible. This, my friends, is the most important message we have for you tonight. You did this, and you are incredible. Impressive. Hearing all about what Friendly House has done over this past year makes me think of one of our songs. It's actually our newest song, and it could be the Friendly House theme song. And I'm going to perform it now. Feel free to sing along at home, and I will wish that I could hear all of you. I'm going to go to the piano. Hi, I'm China Forbes, and I am going to perform Pink Martini's newest song, a very inspiring song of hope and it's called The Lemonade Song. Sweet champagne. 
Well, folks, no one makes lemonade quite like Friendly House. I hope you were inspired tonight. I hope you all are feeling generous. You have until 9 p.m. to bid on all those amazing auction items, buy raffle tickets, and make donations. At 9, we'll be sending out the names of the winners of our raffles and our Selco Community Credit Union Door Prize winner. I hope you've enjoyed our time together tonight as much as I have. I hope you all win and thank you for supporting Friendly House and have fun bidding. We'll see you again soon. <laughs>